The shoulders are one of the most important muscles we use on a daily basis, and the rear head helps you pull, throw, and maintain upright posture. Unfortunately, the rear deltoid is most often ignored in training routines and receives disproportionately less work than the front and middle portions of the shoulder. This can lead to a disproportionate appearance where the front part of the shoulder is significantly bigger than the back. So to help you build bigger and stronger balanced looking shoulders, you're going to want to follow the five steps I outlined in this video. First, you have to work on improving something known as the mind muscle connection because it's especially important to effectively train the rear delt. You see, it's very easy to have other muscles in your back like your lats, rhomboids and traps take over any pulling movement that involves the rear delts. So that's where the mind muscle connection comes into play. It refers to the ability to consciously target and feel the contraction of a specific muscle while performing an exercise. By focusing on engaging a certain muscle like the rear delts, you can create a stronger neural pathway between your brain and the muscle you're working on. This is actually something that can be trained and improved over time, and doing so can enhance the effectiveness of your workouts by ensuring that you're recruiting the muscle fibers that you intend to target while reducing the reliance on surrounding muscle groups. So how do you actually do this in practice? First, when performing any exercise for the rear delts, start by consciously thinking about these muscles in the back of your shoulders. Actually visualize using the muscles in the back of your shoulders in your mind. Focus left on lifting dumbbells or lifting the weights in your hands as you perform rows and reverse flies. Instead, keep your attention focused on pulling with your elbows and the back of your shoulders, not the hands. You also need to make sure that your movements are controlled and that you're not using momentum even if it means using lighter weights. Again. This is the first step because if you're not concentrating on using your rear delts, it's very likely that the bigger, more powerful muscles in your back will take over. Step two before doing any rear delt exercise is to set up the right conditions for your muscles to grow and develop. If you're a beginner, simply training your rear shoulder muscles will be enough to stimulate some muscle growth. However, if you've been training with weights for some time now, it will be highly beneficial to be in a calorie surplus to build more muscle. If you're a man, you can do this very simply by multiplying your weight by 15 and then adding 250 to 500 calories to that number for your calorie surplus starting target. Then make sure that you allocate 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight and subtract that number multiplied by 4 from your total calories. The rest of your calories will come from fats and carbs. In total, this surplus of calories provides the energy required to build and maintain muscle mass. By supporting muscle protein synthesis and helping you have more energy to perform at a higher level and get stronger. A calorie surplus also ensures an overall abundance of nutrients including essential vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients that all play a role in muscle function and recovery. Eating more calories from nutrient-rich foods also optimizes many other physiological processes essential for muscle growth, like providing a boost to hormones like testosterone and IGF-1 while also reducing cortisol. Now, step three is actually training the rear head with effective exercises, and even though compound exercises like bench press and overhead press stimulate the anterior and mid deltoid effectively, they don't do much for the posterior portion. But there are very effective compound exercises for the rear head, like the dumbbell bent over high row. For this exercise, you want to get your upper body parallel with the ground. And that's different than regular rows where you would only bend down by about 45 to 60 degrees. But here you want to go for a full 90 degree bend. Then place one knee on a bench and place your hand that's on the same side as that knee on the bench as well. When pulling the dumbbell back, you once again want to do it differently than a regular row. With a regular row, you would keep your elbow close to your body to engage your lats, but that takes away the majority of the work from the posterior deltoid you're trying to target. So instead, you want your knuckles facing forward and your elbow to be at a 90 degree angle from your body as you pull the dumbbell back, aiming to bring it up towards your chest. Concentrate on feeling that mind-muscle connection and pulling with your rear delt as you do this. Another similar compound exercise that you can do is the bent over high row. Here you would take a barbell and grab it a little wider than shoulder width. Then bend down to a similar 90 degree angle where your back is parallel with the ground and pull the barbell in towards your chest with your elbows at 90 degree angles from your body. Since you don't have a bench to support your upper body, it's extra important that you maintain a good spinal posture to avoid a lower back injury while doing this. So as you're performing reps, make sure to maintain a neutral spine by keeping your core tight, your shoulder blades pulled back, and your chest and hips up. 
You can also perform face pulls to target the post to your head. Set up the cable starting height so that the pulley is in front of your face with the rope attached. Then grab the rope with both hands in a neutral position with your thumbs up. Next, you'll pull the cable in towards your face. As you're doing this, keep your elbows flared outward at those same 90 degree angles from the body. Concentrate on pulling back with your elbows rather than your hands to get a better mind-muscle connection on this exercise. Now, since the rear head is more difficult to target, you'll definitely want to perform isolation exercises as well, and one of the best is the reverse dumbbell fly. Start by standing with your knees slightly bent, shoulder width apart. Then hinge at your hips to bring your back close to parallel with the ground. From there, squeeze your shoulder blades together and lift the dumbbells out to your sides while keeping your elbows slightly bent the whole time. Again, keep your focus on lifting with your elbows and the back of your shoulders rather than your hands. Then lower back down in a controlled fashion to avoid using momentum and repeat. You can also do this same movement on an inclined bench set up at a 45 degree angle, which will allow you to target the rear head in a slightly different way. You would lie face down on the bench, then let the dumbbells hang with your palms facing each other and your elbows slightly bent. Then bring both dumbbells out to your sides in an arc-like motion. Squeeze at the top and lower back down. Another variation can be done on a cable cross machine. Start by setting the pulleys at shoulder height, then grab a D-handle in each hand with one arm over the other. Take a step back so that the weights are already lifted up off the weight stack before even pulling the cables. Then perform the same reverse fly motion with your elbows slightly bent. Then bring the cables back towards each other and continue until your arms are crossed over again. Then repeat. The cables will provide a slightly different stimulus than the dumbbells because they'll keep a constant tension throughout the entire movement. So it's good to incorporate both of these exercises. One final effective variation uses the reverse fly selectorizer machine. It's a similar motion you would just sit facing forward after adjusting the seat so that your hands are about even with your shoulders when gripping the handles. Then while maintaining that slight bend in your elbows, open up your arms following that same arc-like path. Since this is a selectorizer machine that's locked into one set path, you can really concentrate on using that mind-muscle connection to hit the back of your shoulders with this exercise. So you can take the exercises that I just went over and pick a few of them to do twice a week on your pull day when you're also working other muscles in your back like the lats, rhomboids, and the traps. Training them twice a week and aiming for a total of 12 to 20 sets between both workouts combined will maximize muscle protein synthesis over the entire week. You should also stick to a general rep range between 8 to 10 reps per set and 3 to 4 sets per exercise to maximize growth. But for all of this to actually lead to muscle growth, step 4 is arguably the most important. You need to gradually increase the weight you're lifting for these exercises over time. Remember. You want to be smart while doing this. Since it's so easy to have other more dominant muscles in your back take over, you need to still ensure that you're not using the momentum and that your mind is always actively focused on engaging the back of your shoulders. However, on top of maintaining good form, it's absolutely necessary to get stronger at these exercises and increase the difficulty and stress placed on your muscles over time. This is known, of course, as progressive overload, and it's an absolutely necessary rule to follow for muscle growth. You can, of course, also increase the number of sets or reps to progressively overload your rear delt exercises, but one of the most effective and simplest trackable ways to progressively overload is to increase the intensity or the weight load you use over time. This is why I highly recommend that you simply concentrate on getting as strong as possible at the exercises that I just went over while maintaining proper form. And finally, the last step is to switch up your workout routine at least once every six to eight weeks. Here's the thing, no matter how hard you push yourself to lift heavier weights, train harder, and progress, you will hit a plateau. You'll typically make the most progress when first starting a new exercise, but then your body adapts to the stressor and progress always slows down. A great way to get around this is to just switch up your exercises right when your body starts to adapt after a few weeks. So after six to eight weeks, switch reverse flies with dumbbells for reverse flies on the selectorizer machine. Switch barbell high rows for dumbbell high rows or face pulls. By switching to the new exercise, you'll be able to work on getting stronger at a slightly different movement. And then eventually, another six to eight weeks later, you can come back to the exercises that you were starting to get stuck at. You're very likely to notice that when you change up your routine this way, you'll continuously progress at new exercises and that progress will help you progress 
through the previous exercises you were doing when you eventually come back to them. Basically, you wanna give your body enough time to make positive adaptations, like getting stronger at a certain exercise. So you don't wanna just change up your routine every two weeks because it won't be enough time to get better and more efficient at each exercise. But at around the six to eight week mark, when you've gotten stronger at reverse flies or high rows or any exercise for that matter, it's a good idea to switch it up and challenge your body with a new one. This will help you progress faster overall. And it's especially a good idea to do this when you get stuck with a certain weight load. So those are the five steps you need to follow. I guarantee you that if you follow these steps, you'll get bigger, more proportionate rear deltoid heads in no time. Also, if you want more rear deltoid exercises to switch into your routine, I've made a prior video that describes the perfect form for the best exercises for the back of your shoulders. I'll link it in the description and you could watch that next. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you want any additional help with developing the other muscles in your body while burning a bunch of fat in the process, try my free six week shred. You'll get a personalized meal plan, a recipe book, a workout plan, and a coach for six weeks for free. All you gotta do is try your best and not only will you get incredible results, but you'll also get a free program in the process. To find out more, you can click the link below in the description or you can head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pumping.